Hello everybody, <laughs> I'm back with another video, and I just filmed my uh, honorable mentions of 2019, but finally, finally, I have a chance to bring you my top 10 best of 2019. But, so without further ado, let's get started. At number 10, I have Spider-Man Far From Home. This is a very, very well done MCU sequel. It's uh, the most recent one that came out because of COVID-19. Black Widow was supposed to be... Uh, the next one after this, but anyway, this is about Spider-Man and his uh, trip across Europe, and he meets a new ally, which we already know that he's really not an ally, but he meets Mysterio, played very, very well by uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, and this is a very, very fun movie, and I personally did like it, but a lot of people are kind of mixed on it, but yeah, this is a pretty fun movie, so number 10, Spider-Man Far From Home. At number 9, I have Fighting With My Family. This is a true story uh, based upon the life of the WWE diva named Paige. She's right there, played by Florence Pugh. And this is a very, very well done family dynamic movie. And you're just uh, on this journey to see uh, if she is worth being in the WWE. And it's kind of inspirational to women, but this is a really, really well done movie. I know a lot of people don't consider it like the best of 2019, but I really enjoyed this movie. So, number nine, fighting with my family. <laughs> At number eight, and this is one of my most recent, uh, Pickups, one of my favorite uh, horror comedies, and I'm talking about Ready or Not. Ready or Not is a movie that stars Samara Weaving, and it also has uh, Adam Brody in it, and it's about this new bride who uh, marries into a family who plays crazy games to be or to have her be a part of the new family and she picks hide and seek turns out this family is kind of like a uh, satanist and they want to uh, come up with like a spell or something it's been a while since I've seen this but it's a really really fun movie might have to rewatch this soon so that's number eight, ready or not. At number seven, and I don't have this movie yet, but I picked The Lighthouse. <laughs> this movie is very, very well done. I mean, it is a gorgeous looking film. That cinematography is on point, and the black and white makes it really, really sharp, and it's kind of like uh, one of those movies that you would have seen like in the 20s or 30s, because it is a black and white and it has that style, but this is kind of like an art house movie. It's about these two lighthouse keepers who... Uh, take care of a lighthouse and they descend into madness people compared this to uh, Moby Dick meets The Shining 
really, really well done movie. Really, really well shot. It was one one of my all-time favorite movies to look at uh, last year. But, yeah, that's number seven, The Lighthouse. At number six, I have... The actual best DCEU movie besides Aquaman and Wonder Woman, and I'm talking about Shazam. Shazam was about this uh, kid who uh, comes across a new destiny, and he has to uh, blurt out the name Shazam. And he turns out to be a superhero. This is a very, very well done superhero film. It's a lot more than a superhero film because it has a lot of family dynamics in, in it. I love this film. I'll have to give it another watch soon. I haven't watched it ever since I owned it. <laughs> but, yeah. That's number six. Shazam. Top five, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of these movies are probably going to be uh, surprising, but these are my personal picks. So at number five, I have... Blinded by the Light. Very, very well done memoir. This is about... Uh, a Pakistani man who discovers the music of Bruce Springsteen. He becomes obsessed with him. And this just follows his journey uh, trying to meet Bruce Springsteen. And there was the part of the film at the end where it said like he's seen him like 180 something times or something. This is a very, very well done movie. It's not talked about as often as it should be. It's definitely the feel good movie of last year. I love this film. And I'm not that big of a fan of Bruce Springsteen, but this movie is really, really well done. So if you haven't seen Blinded by the Light, give it a watch. At number four. This is going to be a big surprise to a lot of people, but I love horror, so, well, I wouldn't really consider this horror, but I'm going to pick it up. Let's go. At number four, I have Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. My God, what a really, really nostalgic film. This movie is based on the Alvin Schwartz uh, books and it's just basically like a collection of like urban myths and this is a this has a lot of dark imagery and really really fun movie to watch during Halloween so basically about these kids who uh, open up a book and the book writes itself and you have all these stories introduced. And my personal favorite is The Big Toe. <laughs> this is definitely going to be a new tradition for me during the Halloween season. So if you haven't seen Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, definitely recommend it. It's kind of like uh, a Goosebumps, but for teenagers. So number four, Scary Stories to Tell in the dark. Top three, everybody. And a lot of you are probably going to give me crap on the next movie I'm going to introduce. But don't hurt me. <laughs> At number three, I have Avengers Endgame. This is the conclusion to uh, the Avengers uh, quadrilogy. And of course, this has uh, 
Thanos, he's back, but he's not back. <laughs> but major spoilers, uh, within 20 minutes of the movie, uh, they actually find him in present time, and they actually decapitate him, but this is where the movie uh, picks up. This movie has a ton of fan service towards the MCU within the past 10 years because it's a time travel movie. They try to uh, they try to reverse what happened in Infinity War. They want to find the Infinity Gauntlet, and they do. And I have to say, the finale, one of my all-time favorite finales in any movie. The last 30 minutes are epic. I mean, my God, you cannot, you cannot ask for more action, emotion, and just all around fan service. This is a very, very well done movie. But in my opinion, I do prefer Infinity War. I know a lot of people love this movie, but it just felt a little bit too long to me. And it could have been shaved down for probably, or, whoa. <laughs> it could have been shaved um, 30 minutes off, then it would have been a significantly better movie. But this is a very, very well done movie. And you had that, uh, you had that next. You had that next entry, Spider-Man: Far From Home, to uh, remember Iron Man and his death. But yeah, it's number three, Avengers: Endgame. Top two. <laughs> At number two, I have. Well, this was actually a very, very hard decision within these top three. But this one was sandwiched in between my uh, top three. And I picked Jordan Peele's follow-up. And that is Us. Us, in my opinion, is a little bit better than Get Out. It's a lot more complex and... Uh, it follows, like, all these doppelgangers, and they try to uh, make peace with, like, uh, Earth, and it's a really, really fun ride, and it's very underappreciated, and a lot of people don't consider this to be the best of 2019, per se, but I did enjoy this, and I'll definitely have to give it a rewatch soon. But that is the runner-up to the best movie of 2019. So, without further ado, let's bring you my top movie of 2019. <laughs> my top movie of 2019, I picked Cats. This was a very, very well done spectacle of a movie that has fantastic CGI and really, really well done characters. Guys, I'm kidding. I did this in my uh, top 10 worst of 2019. Guys, you probably already know what my top, you guys already know what my favorite movie of 2019 is. And I'm just going to whip it out. My favorite movie of 2019, no joke, Joker. <laughs> this movie was fantastic in my opinion. A lot of people are kind of mixed on it, but I really, really enjoyed this movie. And it was better a second time around. It basically tells the story of Arthur Fleck. 
He's a struggling stand-up comedian, and one day he just snaps, and he personifies Joker. So, don't have to talk much about this movie. If you haven't seen it, give it a watch. People either love it or hate it, but I thought that this was better than Avengers Endgame, in my opinion. Again... This is my personal opinion, so, yeah. The best movie of 2019 is Joker. Alright, guys. That wraps up uh, my honorable mentions and my best of 2019. Finally knocked out both of these videos. Been a long time coming, but I've got more videos on the way. I'll have uh, probably another Stephen King related video coming up tomorrow. I haven't decided which one or what uh, video I want to make of that, but I'm thinking about maybe like uh, I'm thinking maybe like top ten favorite characters from uh, it. Yeah, that'd be a pretty fun one. Yeah, I think that is going to be my next video. So, yeah. Coming tomorrow, I'm going to uh, rank my top ten favorite characters from IT. So, stay tuned for that. And then on Friday, and I apologize, I forgot to mention this in my uh, Gerald's Game movie review, but the next movie review I want to do is The Green Mile. So, look out for that one on Friday. I'll probably watch this on Thursday. And that's a long one. And this is one of my all-time favorite movies. So it'll probably like kick off a series of my all-time favorite movies. So, The Green Mile. Other than that, uh, I might uh, do like a June wrap up, so look out for those videos. And that June wrap up might be as soon as uh, Thursday. I'm nearing the 700 page mark of the stand. Once I get to that mark, I will definitely uh, film my June wrap up, so... Hope you guys have a good day, stay awesome, keep watching some movies, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out. Later.